Mario Cristobal is a man of many talents, an elite head coach in the nation, an offensive tackle during his playing days, a recruiting savant, even as a positions coach. But we have to ask ourselves, how did he get to this position? How did he become the new Miami head coach? How did he resurrect the Oregon program after Willie Taggart stepped down? Year, what it do, YouTube? It's your boy Eli the Rebel. Welcome to the coaching carousel for the NCAA 11. Yes, we are doing a coaching carousel uh, dynasty here at NCAA 11. It's a little different than what you normally see, you know, particularly for NCAA 14. I really like their carousel uh, system. Um, basically, for those that don't know, you, you can start off as an offensive or defensive coordinator in all the games that you play uh, in the game. The CPU will control the other side. So if you're an OC, the CPU will play defense for you and vice versa. Um, that's why I really like those uh, coaching carousels because you can start off as a coordinator, right? And then you decide whether you go to a not as great school and be the head coach or slowly be a better uh, offensive coordinator um i'm not sure if being uh an oc or dc in those games um leads to uh you know i'm not sure if that leads to you know if you're able to recruit as an oc or dc but you know i'm getting a little off topic what we're doing today um as you know by the intro we're doing a mario crystal ball uh coaching carousel now so mario crystal ball picked up the fiu job in 2006 in 2009 their record is three and nine here um so the way that the way this series is gonna work is uh so you actually don't get um a coaching uh offer to go to another school until you uh complete season two so once i complete season one here which you're going to see today um the best thing they they could the game will do is ask you to renew your contract um and you can automatic you could either extend it or decline i never hit the decline option because it's just going to give you the same caliber of school and like it also just doesn't make sense logistically as like you're you just started at the school and now you want to leave so um i feel like it would be fair to fiu to give them at least two years before i move on to another job um it just it just makes common it's just common sense at that point like you wouldn't see someone you know unless they were like really bad um you know as my phone is going off uh, on my apple watch in the background um like you wouldn't see you know people like unless they do a really poor job um you know you wouldn't see people you know just be there for a year and then dip um on, on their own like that um necessarily so we're gonna we're gonna stay true to we're gonna stay true to the game um the way it's meant to be played which is uh supposedly just you know uh getting you know just rock it with fiu for two years and then see where life takes us now a lot of people are going to be disappointed by this but i there's going to be a very slim chance um that um we're going to have uh fiu gameplay like playing with the actual team simply because i know i'm going to leave after year two so there's really no point in me playing the playing with the actual team unless we get like some sort of studs here um in recruiting wise for week one or whatever so th th there's that i guess you know um even though the intro suggests it i highly doubt we're going to get the actual miami and and uh oregon jobs so we're gonna rock with this to start um and then now we can go to the preseason recruiting um <clears throat> let's see what uh team needs we have for this so it looks like we only need a punter and strong safety however we cannot recruit punters in the during the season we can only do that in the off season so i'm just gonna go straight 
to strong safety. Okay, we got a guy from DC. That's it. We got a guy from DC. Which, in this game, they treat it like its own state, which is really weird, but whatever. Um. Now, the only downside about, you know, a smaller school like this, I will only have one pipeline state to work with, and that's Florida. So, I don't know. I could... I'm gonna go with the 451. He looks like... He looks more like a strong safety than this guy. And then all these guys look like free safety play free safety but not strong safety let's take a look at let's take a look at middle linebackers we got five stars one from cali one from texas we'll go back to that we got two from texas and west virginia for the outside linebackers the reason why i'm trying to target like five stars and things like that there's no limit to what you can grab um in this uh in in season recruiting so like if i target a five star caliber guy i'm automatically in his top eight which is really really nice um defensive end you can pick up one defensive end hard to find a a four star defensive end and and the real nice thing about um picking lower uh low small uh what you call this smaller schools is that for some reason this game like likes to give you uh this game likes to give you uh you know linemen you know worst case scenario so that way you can always have at least one one person you can always have one to recruit um guards we have four four yeah that's fun we'll go to tight end here we only have one two star now this is where i can get a little where i can go to here we'll take the canadian guy that guy's just for the meme of it hmm. are there any possession guys no all right so only those two ohio texas texas we can get like one of those if we get one of those guys if we get two of them we can convert i need a five star power back and I only have two left for quarterback, which we don't need, but it would be cool to have. Any Florida guys? No. So we'll get the two quarterbacks. And that's our board, man. This is a weird board, but... You know, we'll see. Um, we'll see what the game will give us for interest in things like that, and then uh, I'll I'll keep updating you guys as we go. Okay, so I didn't go over um, everything. Uh, you know, I didn't go over the names of the recruits we ended up targeting, but I'm gonna go over them now because we did have one drop, and that's unfortunately both quarterbacks that we targeted from the beginning. We actually put points into one of them and that's nick thompson um nick thompson dropped out of us after the bye week and we somehow magically beat syracuse through the sim don't ask me how um so what so now there's no big there's no brainer that i'm gonna put uh the extra 10 points here on manuel carter he's a strong safety out of dc notre dame and penn state we're trying to be team number three for them um so we're gonna put more points into him everybody else we have simmons who just became uh we just got into his top five which is good i don't know how long that will last we'll see um we also have ernest roberts robinson out of alabama we're in his top three for sure um and though that's the only glaring ones that i feel like we can realistically get um so I'm going to push for Manuel Carter and Robinson the most. And then let's see if the other pieces fall into place. Okay, I don't understand this game. We won we won against USF and we lost 
a recruit. Um, it was the oh, uh, uh, it was this one. Yeah, we lost out on the wide receiver from Canada. I just recruited him for the laws. Didn't work out so great. We have a negative arrow on uh, Titus Mullins out of Bridgeport, Michigan. We could come in and be number three if we want to. We'll try. We'll try. Well, when it says it's down from normal, all you got to do is just bring up and just put more points into them. And then uh, you're, you're back in the race a little bit, pretty much. Um, in terms of the strong safety, Manuel Carter is on the up and up. We're number two behind Notre Dame, but we're above Penn State, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. And then Ernest Robertson, uh, we're still number one over there. But it's amazing how I dropped out of a race, even though we won against USF. All right, so this is a major, major implication right here. We beat Western Kentucky, even though we lost to Vanderbilt. But we lost out on 40 points. Particularly, we put 20 points on Titus Mullins. And then he dropped out. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to put, we're going to, you know, put points. We're going to put, make it 20 across the board. Give everybody some love. Looks like we have the center ready to come visit us soon. Um, I'm not going to make a visit against Mississippi State. I'm going to lock in UL Monroe. I don't have confidence in beating Mississippi State. Um, because if you look at our team, right, first of all, the game, if I schedule Mississippi State now, then I don't have the chance to change it back, so, and they're also B plus B, B plus, B plus, how did we beat Syracuse, and also USF, and USF was on the road and we won, that, that to me is incredible, we lost to Vanderbilt, um, but we beat Western Kentucky, so going into North Texas, um, that's going to be a toss up. We're not going to be Mississippi State. Um, however, FAU is winnable leading up to UL Monroe, which is pretty much the, uh, if I can go to it, UL Monroe, we're going to, we need to make, get as many recruits in for this game as possible. That's a realistic, uh, game to win for sure if we beat guys like syracuse and usf we should be able to take care of business over there so again i'm just gonna go back to recruiting double check that yes i have ulm here for james smith he's out of east naples florida it looks like auburn is pretty much all set on this kid but um again top you need to be top three for uh, a recruit to visit your school and we're actually above Florida State. Okay, so it looks like we're down to three. And the two that dropped out are, you know, the five-star halfback. Um, and the fullback dropped out. Why did the halfback drop out? That would have been a really nice five-star. Dang, we weren't recruiting him as hard enough. I didn't have points. I didn't have room for points for you, though. Um, let's take a look at whether we need to go visit Mississippi State. No, we don't. We're actually going to take a visit before he does to goes to Auburn. So I would really uh, would love to put more points on him, actually. So we're going to give him 40. Just so that way he can catch up to Auburn. Ernest Robertson is still waiting is still trying to trim down from five to three but manuel carter we're number one over Notre dame and virginia tech which is really good so again we'll lock in ul monroe right here um the other cool reason main reason why i picked uh mario crystal ball because there there's obviously more uh renowned coaches uh in the nation right now but what i really like about mario crystal ball is like the fact that he's also a world a nationwide excuse me a nationwide uh recruiting uh savant he oh they're two and four interesting um so mario cristobal is known to recruit was a major part of recruiting especially when he was you know 
a positions coach at uh, at Bama. Um, really, you know, you know, being a, a former offensive lineman, uh, he was able to, you know, get some get some guys for the uh, for the O line, uh, you know, for Bama to come over and stuff like that in order to become the dynasty that they are today. Um, so that's that's another part of this reason why I'm doing a Mario Crystal Ball rebuild and not any other coach is because uh, you know I feel that I'm one of the best uh, at recruiting uh, for this game. I'm gonna push it to my test. I'm gonna take it to the limit. Um, oh, it looks like Manuel Carter um, has uh, a lucky number, so we'll keep that in mind for next week. When we play ULM, all we have to do is accept the number, even if it's a wacky number, and they'll pretty much commit on site. Coach, I'm a star player. Promise you'll take advantage of my talents. So James Smith wants to be a starter day one, which is fine by me. And then Ernest Robertson, Robinson, we're still waiting on him to make a decision. Um, Before we go to the FAU game, I just want to show out something really, really cool uh to know because uh fun fact it might it's not gonna mean anything in the actual sim but wide receiver number 13 so in this in this uh dynasty his name is josh shelby but this is actually uh ty hilton believe it or not um so that's a is it gonna matter um when he play it if you know is it gonna is he gonna make an impact on the game today no but it's just really cool to know that this is uh, T.Y. Hilton um, because he ends up being, you know, one of the best wide receivers uh, for the Colts in recent memory, which is actually kind of cool. As we beat, we beat FAU 10-7. Wow. Hey, but the thing about this game, too, is like you could blow somebody out or win like 10-7. A win is a win, man. A win is a win. As long as you see the W next to the score line, everything is just going to be a-okay. So, we are 5-2 and two going into the UL Monroe game. Um, we're going to have, if Robinson um, decides to cut his list down to three, we'll put him in as well. We'll, we'll put a visit for him in as well and then just ride out the rest of the season honestly um because you know th th this is what it all comes down to i'd really love to get all three recruits uh this week right here as uh the front cover says uh Ole miss upset auburn which is really really huge for uh our visit with james smith james is concerned that you'll keep him on the bench all year Okay, this is where the game is. So one of the player promises is guarantee him a starter role, but look. Chance to play early is not important to James. I'm still going to push for playing time. I don't care. Um, location doesn't matter to him. Coach, reputable coach doesn't matter to him. So what can we offer you besides playing time? Coaching style? And then I know you have... And then we can talk about the tradition yeah the tradition of the school and then give him the starter role he's trimmed the list and wants to come in for a visit yo visit right now man visit right now Ernest is looking for a program with higher prestige doesn't care about playing for a big time college coach Alabama's kind of close to Florida okay so we'll do that you're definitely gonna play you definitely gonna play and coaching style he has he's good good potential with excellent uh discipline oh we're not gonna give him the playbook he plays defense so we'll, we'll show him what practice looks like okay strong safety wants to wear number 17 not the craziest number i've seen for a position player so we'll agree agree to that um coach reputation not familiar uh doesn't not concerned about the depth chart so like this is one of the few uh you know 
when I give him the uh, jersey number 17, that's all you need to give him to fulfill the promise. I could redshirt him and like he'll still, you know, be happy and stuff. So that's a really easy one to fulfill, in my opinion. Uh, pretty indifferent on our style of play. Not to worry about his education. So it looks to me like he likes program prestige. Location. That's what he's thinking about and uh, if he's not familiar with the reputation as the coach we could take him to the charity event i think that makes the most sense did we schedule activities yes and we're agreeing to that and then i can always double check it here with player promises so we made promises to james smith and manuel carter um Oh, please win. Please win. I oh man, please win. They're 3 and 5, we're 5 and 2, and we're at home. Please game, do not bend me over. Yes. 45-28. We should get all 3 recruits in this week. We should get all three recruits in. This is a great start to the rebuild. Heck, I might even do a third season with FIU, the way we're recruiting so far. Now, in in other dynasties that I've done off camera, you know, just me having a good time with this game, I've managed to get out one to seven players uh, from based on the way I spread the points around with tens to start. I want. One time I had eight. One time I had eight players. But that but like there was no five stars for that. Like I didn't get any five stars for that. Um but look as we see here, we do land Manuel Carter and James Smith. We're going to wait on the free safety. Um we can show um it looks like all we had to do is player promise these guys and they're fine. I'm really excited for Manuel Carter because that was a position of need and we got it done which is really really nice um so now what we could do is go back to recruiting did we get the soft verbal at least yes uh he's gonna take his other visits that's fine we're gonna put a hundred points on him and then if we win our next game um we should be all set we should be all set on getting him as well although we do face troy and they're on the road so if it's not this game we'll still have a chance against Lafayette but one more win we should be bowl eligible which which would make us seven and five worst case scenario and then we could you know go to a bowl game and then I would actually play but unfortunately it looks like the free safety committed to Auburn so that's a real uh shocker and it says that he wanted a more prestigious program that's why which is unfortunate I just find it funny that we flipped uh this Auburn commit and we took and we took this guy away from Auburn and instead he's coming to us. I think the location prestige uh was a was helpful on top of the player promises and stuff like that. Um Manuel Carter um from DC um is coming to us, which is nice. As you can see here with the rest of these uh commitments, it looks like Auburn has been, you know, stealing our our targets recently which is kind of weird so we finished the year seven and five uh we had a three game losing streak but we clutched out a dub uh against mid 10 at home uh to make us bowl eligible and we had we did not get invited to the conference i actually don't even know if we if the Sun Belt does have a conference uh championship game i can't remember um, but we finished five and three in conference wise, which is always a, a good sign. Um, so this is the part where uh, we get the announcement for uh, whether we are bowl eligible. We are going to the New Orleans Bowl against Marshall, um, which is really cool. It looks like this is uh, actually uh, Titus Young um, that won the Heisman. <laughs> for for the 2010 so not Kellen Moore the quarterback of Boise State the wide receiver won it um ooh they're B minus B and C plus um so 
um we're actually gonna play this game uh next episode which is gonna be really cool and before we do that we're gonna go ahead and sim uh these two bowl games for week one looks like tennessee smacked the living crap out of hawaii and utep beat air force and we're gonna be playing the new orleans bowl in louisiana so again marshall b minus overall b offense c plus we actually went up from a c minus to just c's uh across the board which is really good and then just to show you guys one more time um we landed two recruits uh so first off we landed james smith out of east naples florida um yes he has poor discipline which isn't really you love you don't love to see that for an academic school but i'd rather have a better program than a better than be known for academics and things like that um we just we just all we had to do for this guy was offer him a player promise that he will be the starting center next season um which can be a reality uh, i don't have a problem with that and then manuel carter all we had to do for him is promise him to wear the number 17 and he's all set with that and he's all set with that this is the guy i'm really interested in um he is mr football for dc because uh they treat uh washington dc as its own state uh which is very interesting um he runs a 445 um has a plus uh awareness which is nice uh c almost a 40 inch vert very nice uh c plus hands 360 bench press 535 squat the excellent potential i love to see that and then average discipline so with excellent potential he he's gonna naturally grow he's going to naturally grow i love that uh, i love that because i don't i put more emphasis on recruiting for the school budgets as opposed to uh you know training training but that is it man so i'm gonna hit save right now and you know what actually yeah i'm gonna do it like this because i'm done for the for the for recording so yeah this is gonna be a fun series man next episode you're gonna see the bowl game uh the new orleans bowl um hopefully we win that i think we have the tools to do it we'll see but yeah man that that is gonna be a it's gonna be really interesting i'll try to combine the game actually no i can't combine the game the game usually a uh, full gameplay takes like an hour uh to complete but like um but like i'll trim it down to like you know i'll try to trim it down to like 20 minutes and then after that and then like hopefully the off season the the off season and season two preparations uh will be its own episode um so with that it's been your boy Eli the rebel i'm super excited to give you guys this series and i hope you guys are too um you know it's a lot of people are giving me flack for you know not uploading uh pla content legends rc's content look man i love if y'all think i was I, I like pokemon man i love sports video games and one of them it happens to be ncaa football because we're gonna get we're gonna get a brand new ncaa 23 for the next gen consoles hopefully they'll keep it current so i don't have to you know try to upgrade from my xbox one but that's another topic for another day so with that it's me boy you the rebel i'll catch you guys on the next episode of the coaching carousel with crystal ball Deuces!